Trench 9 is Hope Taylor's Cutting E, which I suspect is one of his later excavations. We know that the ones on the other side of the windmill uh, were the first trenches he dug at Bamber in 1959-60. Um, our strategy really is we, we recovered his record, so we have measurements to, to, to from various parts of the castle surrounding, um, showing where the corners of the trench are, and about three or four photographs of it, pretty much fully excavated. So we really just wanted to locate the trench, empty the backfill, and re-record it. Uh, but we had a, we got slightly detoured by um, one of the sections, uh, with, which was standing quite tall through sand. Um, that partially collapsed. When we tidied that up, we found a couple of quite substantial animal bones and that's prompted this extension to Hope Taylor's Trench in order to recover um, this, this unusual um, dump of um, faunal material. The stage we're at at the moment is um, we start uncovering a lot over the past hour. Um, this is the skull. We've got articulated spine here, articulated spine here as well. This uh, part of the spine here was partly in the section which is what gave us an indication that it was a basically a burial anyway. Um, we've got the cut coming in here into a, like a V shape on this side and the same at that side over there. The, the fill itself was is this like really type of yellowish golden sand. And we have an edge at this side where it goes dark. So you know that it's definitely, definitely a burial. Um, Graham thinks post medieval and um, we'll find out more tomorrow when we uncover more of the skeleton. We initially thought that it was articulated, so we were going to dig it as a, well, as a grave, effectively. Um, as we got down onto the bones, it quickly became apparent that it wasn't, that they were quite jumbled up. And then we started to realise we had uh, more skulls than any one animal was, um, would healthily have. Uh, so then it was a case of trying to expose it fully, uh, get a good plan, get, get it properly recorded, lift it and get it to the specialist, who we, we'll hope will be able to give us an explanation as to why this collection of animals are here in this slightly unusual spot. You can see fairly straightforwardly that there are mostly horse bones, there's three horse skulls, some jaws, plenty of long bones um, and a few other articulated pieces of ribs and vertebrae. But there's also a few remains of cattle in there. There's two cattle jaws and a skull I think if I remember right. Uh, there's at least the remains of four individuals on the basis of the, the long bones that are present in the skulls. From the teeth, we can see that the teeth are really, really worn, which means they're quite old, elderly animals. And very interestingly, even looking at them in a the trench from a distance, you can see that there are strange wear patterns on the, the anterior, that's the front teeth, or the molar row, the, 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 the grinding teeth, which are really indicative of bit wear. So these animals have been chewing a bit. So they've been used almost certainly for riding, uh, but we can't really tell any more about these, uh, these uh, individuals until we do some more analyses. Well, it, it's in the gate entrance. It overlies the, the robbed out medieval step, so it's a post-medieval burial, and it seems to be sealed in beneath the, the later 18th century steps that Dr. Sharp put in. And it's an unusual thing. We, we don't normally get horses. They've not been fully butchered. Uh, the cows in here as well, so it, it's almost like a, a dump, a, 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 a charnel dump of, of animal material. Um, they're disarticulated, but they're not broken open for marrow, so they, they don't seem to be used primarily for food. But they've clearly been partially butchered um, before they've gone into the ground, so it, perhaps it could be something semi-industrial. Um, they're taking horse hair, horse hooves, perhaps taking off the larger um, joints of meat um, to feed them to hounds. My suspicion uh, in that it looks rather it's rather crude, really, dumping dead, dead animal carcasses into a gate entrance. So I'm wondering if it's uh, the, the period of time when the, the Forsters owned the castle. They were alcoholics and um, gamblers, and they finally brought the estate to rack and ruin. So the time period fits, and the, the behaviour of dumping you know, carcasses into, a, into an entrance way uh, would fit in with, a, with a, a fairly dubious bunch. So I think the Forsters are our, our chief suspects at the moment. So the fact that they were, they were using the West Ward as a, something of a knacker's yard and dumping carcasses in the, in the entrance wouldn't come as a great shot. I think simply because horses are very high value creatures, you have to have a good reason for killing one and putting it in a hole in the ground. You don't do it lightly. So you only slaughter a horse if you absolutely have to. The fact that it's still in partial articulation, there are ribs together, implies that there's a problem with the, with the flesh of the horse. For some reason they can't use the flesh. I, th I think they've probably used the skins from the animal because there's a, a distinct absence of phalanges. So that would indicate really that, um, that the, 
that they've been um, flayed and this, the skins, the hides have been removed. So maybe the animal has died from a disease or the, the animals have died from, from a disease and have been placed here in a remote part of the castle um, simply to keep them in isolation. Um, I think it's not implausible. The one caveat I'd have with that would be that if you, they've got animals which are clearly diseased, I don't think they'd cut them up. Uh, and, and expose themselves to the blood and, and gore. Um, I think they'd just um, basically dig a big hole and roll the carcasses in to dispose of them as, as potentially dangerous waste. These ones seem to have been dismembered before they've been dumped. Um, so I would probably favour an industrial kind of process that they're being used for a purpose and then the, the remains disposed of rather than simply disposing of diseased animals. Uh, but until we get further um, um, specialist analysis, it, uh, we're all guessing really. We can look at the, the joint surfaces, for example, in the laboratory and see whether they have little extra growths of bone or some worn surfaces, which will tell us about the kind of work they did, whether they were traction animals. So we can see different arthropathies maybe in the vertebrae, which can tell us that whether they were ridden. Uh, we have the bit wear, which is a fairly clear indicator so far. But that's only on two of the individuals we can see. We can look at evidence of status for animal bones. Certain kinds of animals, wild animals particularly in the Saxon period, important for Bamborough, were only hunted by very high status important people. So if we find lots of bird bones, lots of crane for example, big birds that were hunted with falcons, we can find the, the bones of the raptors and the falcons themselves, which are the, are the animals that they were using to hunt with, then that can tell us about the, the activities and the, kind of the people and the status of the people that were actually on the site itself. And that's why Bamber is really interesting and important because it's a, a very high status site, a major castle, a major site from the Saxon period right through to the late medieval period. Once they've been um, taken out of the ground, once they've been recorded fully and, and removed, they'll go off to Durham University to their faunal labs to be um, fully investigated, see if there's any butchery marks or what kind of butchery marks. That'll tell us potentially what happened to the animals if they were defleshed fully, if, um, if they were flayed. Uh, they'll look at the teeth to see if the animals um, had bits within their mouths, if they were draft horses, the uh, There'll be kinds of pathology within the animal bones themselves, the skeletons. If they're arthritic, there's a possibility there for them being draft animals. They'll give us the size of the animals in question, whether they're gracile horses for used for hunting as opposed to much more uh, robust horses which would be used for, for draft purposes for ploughing or things like that. So we'll get a, an idea of what kind of animals were involved here. Um, I think similarly with the cattle, they'll tell us um, what kind of cattle they were, if they're young, if they're from a milk herd, if they're... There's all sorts of potential um, patterns that you can identify from, from the slaughter pattern of, of an animal. So if an animal's killed when it's young and it's male, then it, chances are you're dealing with a milk herd. So things like that will, will all also be identified from the, the faunal uh, record here. They certainly do seem to extend further down slope beneath the steps. At present, we're not going to go after the, the rest of the assemblage. If the specialists think that it's an extraordinarily important assemblage and they would desperately like to see it in entirety, then I think in a future season we might consider lifting the steps and recovering the, the, the remainder. Uh, we know they don't go all the way down the steps because we, we've lifted some of the paving in the flat area beyond and um, there was no animal bone beneath it. Um, so I think we'll play it by ear, but it would be quite an involved process getting the, the, the well set steps up and then um, back in place. So it may well be that the rest of it remains uh, where it is.